So now we are here in uh, Lillehammer where the Olympics in 1994 took place. So here is the jump. <whistles> crazy, crazy people. <laughs> and uh, we were thinking about trying to get up to the top and look at the view. <laughs> might have had just a tiny turn of events. It is now pouring, blowing, thunder, lightning and the plan was to go up there. We might wait. Behind us you can see, well basically you see nothing because <laughs> it's so much rain and uh, wind. We might have to have a little break inside the car before we uh, attempt to go uh, up. If we get there. So we'll see. Just a tiny bit of rain and uh, we will head for the car because uh, we won't go up like this. So we have to run! Yep. So uh, here we are, sheltered under, I have no clue, but we're sheltered for the rain, so we're set. We didn't have to run all the way to the car. But uh, yeah. Norway uh, weather. Tent is taken down, car is ready, just some small details left and some small details from the dog left to take care of and then we'll continue our journey back. Today we will drive uh, the main road and um, the plan is mostly superchargers, so we'll see. Supercharger in uh, Lillehammer, uh, our first stop after the camping grounds, and uh, we are heading back. So we, it seems like um, yeah, well, 85, 90 percent charge should be <clears throat> should be enough to make it. It's about 120 kilometers between this supercharger and the next supercharger in Nebenes, <clears throat> which is one of the newest superchargers in Norway. And uh, hopefully we don't have to uh, hitch the trailer off, take the trailer off the caravan because they have made it very nice there. I'll show you when we get there. Um, today, 21 degrees, sun is shining, uh, there's a little, wind, a little wind, but I think consumption wise it'll be probably quite similar to what we have uh, had before. So looking forward to that, and as you can see, the caravan is parked right over there on the other side, so I'm sitting and watching it now. We parked it like that, easy to uh, detach and to uh, put on again, so yeah. We have reached 85%, and as you can see, now the power of the charging is uh, getting quite low, it's under Chadmo speed, it's uh, 36 kilowatt, uh, no, kilowatt. and uh, yeah, with 85% we should be good to go now in yeah, a 
any minute actually so I'm just waiting for my girlfriend to come and then we'll be off We have made like the weirdest parking ever but sometimes you just have to do that to be able to have the caravan with you at least the car is on a parking spot so now we are in Bolleland in Espa and uh, everyone who has seen Tesla Bjorn knows that he always stops here to get buns so that's what we're gonna do we are gonna get So, just like uh, Tesla Bjorn and a whole lot of others, we bought Espa buns! Yay! So now we have, uh, yeah, we have quite a lot of hours in front of us in the car, but now at least we have buns! Yay! Nebdenes, one of the newest uh, superchargers, second newest in Norway, I think. And as you see, the stalls are placed wonderfully, especially when you drive a trailer. Or for us, when we drive a caravan, we don't have to detach the trailer. It's uh, perfect. And now there's not that many cars in queue either, waiting in line. We are one, two, three, four, five Teslas, as far as I can see. Um, so it's just perfect. We spent uh, 374 watt hour per kilometer and uh, traveled almost 125 kilometers. So uh, definitely on par with everything. And uh, we have now eaten buns. I have eaten one with the chocolate taste and one with the caramel taste, and they were awesome. So Next stop after charging, I think it'll we spend about an hour, uh, and uh, next stop now will be Postel. So uh, we have yeah one and a half hour. That leap is 155 kilometers actually, so it's um, more than we have traveled. So we'll have to have at least 90 percent charge here. So we'll be here for a while. But the dog needs to have a, a trip, he needs to pee, he needs some uh, water, and I think we need, well, we have some needs, we do. So, we'll just uh, juice up and continue our journey. Going to supercharge at the first supercharger in Leo uh, because we miscalculated a bit to the next one in Porsgrunn. But there were like five cars in line before us, so we decided no, we'll uh, skip and we'll just take a Chadmo stop on the way so that we have enough to get to the supercharger in Porsgrunn. It estimates that we will have 16% battery capacity left when we get there and it's sinking it has been 21 now we just turned to went down to 15 now let's see if it changes on this uh, downhill slope there now but we were actually wondering will we make it to the supercharger in Postgrun anyway and uh, theoretically no. Uh, 
uh, the answer is very clear, we won't. And if I put the supercharger impulsion in now, here, in the map, it estimates that we will have 7% left when we get there. So the question is, do we dare to trust the Tesla navigation where it's uh, estimating? It's supposed to take into account the weather up and down hill and uh, temperatures and winds and everything, but we have the X factor in the Model X behind us there, the caravan. So, we're having a dilemma, if we make it, it'll be probably, uh, I don't think we will have 7%, we'll probably have less, but I don't know if we will dare to gamble. I know that there's quite a bit of uphill before the supercharger, but there's also a quite long downhill right before the supercharger. So. Yeah, well, it would definitely make the trip uh, 10 times more exciting. It might also uh, make us stop <laughs> alongside the road and then suddenly the trip will take a lot longer time because somebody has to pick us up so that we can get to a charging station. Um, not very tempting, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So still says 6%, we have 39 kilometers left to drive. Will it work? Will it go? We don't know. Speed is now 71, we put it down again. Still 335 in average consumption. The trucks are passing us, all the cars are passing us, there's a Model S passing us. And our uh, emergency stop in Larvik, there we'll have 12% left according to the GPS. And the supercharger in Postgren, now it has gone down to 4% when we get there. To do. So there is uh, the caravan detached. And what does that mean? That means that if there's one thing I have learned uh, of driving EVs, it's better safe than sorry. So when we came to uh, this stop in Larvik, we uh, had an estimate now of only 3% left when we got to the supercharger in Postgrün. Then it had dropped from 11% during that little trip. And uh, I know that there's quite a bit of uphill. Um, so I just didn't... Yeah, we, d we agreed that we didn't take the chance of doing that. So here we are, Chatamo charging at uh, 40 kilowatt, which is not that bad, 13%. We will uh, juice up just a couple of percent more, maybe up to 20 or something, so that we are sure that we reach the supercharger. Uh, very, very tempting to push the limits for everybody when you have an EV, even if you don't have a trailer behind, even if you're driving a Leaf or a Zoe or a Mitsubishi Aimev or whatever. Don't. Just don't. Because, uh, like I said, better safe than sorry, and it's such a hazard to get a flatbed to pick you up. And also it's kind of embarrassing. So, uh, better safe than sorry. Yep, now we are finally at the supercharger. And, um, well, we spent 11% that little uh, last leg there. So, that means we would have had 0% if we didn't stop. So, uh, again, better safe than sorry. Uh, I put that extra stop and I'm very, very happy and grateful for that. 
sometimes you can drive past zero percent, uh, sometimes you can't. Uh, that's because the estimate is not, uh, it's not, what am I gonna say? You can't trust the estimate, it will vary from time to time. So maybe it would have worked, maybe it wouldn't, but um, we chose to be on the safe side and that's definitely what I recommend to do. So let's juice up and uh, we're gonna have one supercharger stop in between, about 60 kilometers from here. And uh, we could have driven the whole thing in one leg, but the charging is so much quicker on a low state of charge. So we choose to do that and we'll add another stop. So we'll, we'll charge to like 50% and take a new charging stop later. So now I need food. There, now we are finished. We have uh, put the caravan at my dad's place because it's easier to be there and uh, wash it. So I'm gonna do that tomorrow while uh, my dear girlfriend is at work. And uh, the last leg was uh, 60, 60. no, 70.3 kilometers and an average of 367 watt hour per kilometer. So the, the average was a bit higher. Uh, but still, good. The trip has gone well. We have tried traveling in country or up country uh, in different terrain, up mountains, down mountains, in. Uh, places that there's not a Tesla supercharger and that has been actually quite simple there are a lot of uh, rapid chargers and yes I am lucky we live in Norway and I'm very happy that I live in Norway because uh, they really focus on having a lot of rapid chargers around in the country and uh, it's really getting there a lot of rapid chargers making this trip easy we charged quite a bit, but still we charged less than I thought we would. I thought we would be charging a lot more. So uh, all in all, very happy. Tried that and also tried uh, traveling along routes today with a supercharger. On the way down or on the way back from Lillehammer now, we took uh, mostly supercharging except our little miscalculation. And uh, on the way up to Lillehammer, mainly on Chadamo chargers. It's been interesting. Both of, it, both of them, both of the ways have been simple. Charging stops roughly about an hour every time, but charging stops, they go fast. The dog needs to have a walk, he needs to have water, he needs to have some food, and so do we. And suddenly the time flies. And uh, we're back in the car and ready for the next leg. So all in all, a very good camping trip. Don't you agree? Yeah. 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 Yeah.